Hi, I'm Blaine Moores. I'm going to be talking about the use of vector graphics in org uh, for the purpose of doing reproducible research in structural biology. I'm an associate professor of biochemistry and molecular biology at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center in Oklahoma City. My laboratory uses X ray crystallography to determine the atomic structures of proteins like this one in the lower left and of nucleic acids important in human health. This is a crystal of an RNA, which we have placed in this X-ray diffraction instrument. And uh, after rotating the crystal in the X-ray beam for two degrees, we obtain this falling diffraction pattern, which has thousands of spots on it. Um, we rotate the crystal for a total of 180 degrees, uh, collecting 90 images to obtain all of the data. We then uh, process those images to uh, and do an inverse Fourier transform to obtain the electron density. This uh, electron density map has been contoured at the one sigma level. Uh, that level is being shown by this blue uh, chicken wire mesh. Atomic models have been fitted to this chicken wire. So these lines represent uh, bonds between atoms. The atoms are being represented by points. And the atoms are colored by atom type, uh, you know, red for oxygen, blue for nitrogen. And then in this case, uh, carbon is colored cyan. We have fitted a uh, drug molecule to the central blob of electron density, which corresponds to the active site of this uh, protein, which is uh, RET kinase. It's important in lung cancer. When we're finished with the model building, we will then examine the result of the final structure using, and prepare images for publication using the graphics program. In this case, we've overlaid a number of structures, and we're examining the distance between um, a, the side chain of an alanine and uh, one of two uh, drug molecules. This alanine side chain actually blocks the binding of one of these drugs. So the most popular program for doing this kind of analysis and for preparing images for publication is PyMol. Uh, PyMol was used to prepare these images on the covers of uh, these leading journals. Uh, PyMol is uh, favored because it has 500 commands and uh, 600 parameter settings that provide exquisite control over the appearance of the output. IMO has uh, over 100,000 users reflecting its popularity. This is the GUI for PyMO. It shows uh, in white this uh, viewport area where one interacts with the loaded molecular object. Uh, we have uh, rendered the same RET kinase uh, with a uh, set of um, parameters that are uh, have been uh, set of preset parameters that have been named publication. Other way of applying parameter settings and commands is to enter them at the PyMol prompt. And then the third way is to run, to load and run script. PyMol is actually written in C for speed, but it is wrapped in Python for extensibility. In fact, there are well over a hundred uh, articles about various plugins and scripts that people have developed to extend PyMol over the years. Here's some examples from the snippet library that I developed. On the left is a default uh, cartoon representation of a RNA hairpin. I find this uh, reduced representation of the RNA hairpin to be uh, too stark, and I, I prefer these alternate ones that I developed. So these three to the right of this one are um, not available through pull downs at PyMol. So why develop a uh, PyMol snippet library for org? Well, org provides great support for literate programming, where you have code blocks that contain code that's executable, and the output is shown below that code block. And then you can um, fill the surrounding area, the document, with the explanatory prose. Org has great support for editing that explanatory prose. Org can run PyMol through PyMol's uh, Python API. And uh, so one of the uses of such an org document is to assemble a gallery of draft images. We often have to look at uh, dozens of candidate images with the molecule in different orientations, different zoom settings, different representations, different colors, and so on. And to have those uh, images along with adjacent to the code that was used to generate them can be uh, very effective for um, further editing uh, the code and improving the images. Once the final images have been selected, one can uh, submit the code as part of the supplemental material. And then finally, one can use the journal uh, package to uh, use uh, the org files as chronic laboratory notebook, which is illustrated with 
collected images. This can be very useful when assembling uh, manuscripts um, months or years later. This shows the YAS snippet pull down uh, after the, my um, library has been installed. So I have an org file open. So I'm in org mode. And uh, we have a, the org mode uh, men, sub menu. And under it, uh, all of my snippets are located in these uh, sub sub menus called, um, that are prepended with PyMol uh, Pi. Under the molecular re representations menu, there is a listing of uh, snippets. The top one is for the ambient occlusion effect, which we're going to apply in this org file. So these uh, lines of code were inserted after as long as these uh, flanking lines um, that define the source block were inserted by clicking on that line. And then I've added some additional code. So the first line defines the language that we're using. That we're going to use the Jupyter Python language. Um, and then you can define the session, and the name of this is arbitrary. And then uh, the kernel is uh, our means by which we gain access to the AP, Python API of PyMol. And the remaining settings apply to the output. Execute this code, and to get the out the resulting image, we put the uh, cursor on inside this code block or on the top line, and enter uh, Control C, Control C. It shows the resulting uh, image has been loaded up. It takes about uh, 10 seconds for this up to appear. So the downside of this is if you have a large number of these, uh, the org file can uh, lag quite a bit when you try to scroll through it. So you need to close up these uh, result drawers and only open up the, uh, the ones that are you're currently examining. So these are features I think are important in practical work. So the uh, plus is feature that's present, minus is absent. So I think uh, tab stops and tab triggers are really important. Uh, triggers are important for the fast assertion of code. Tab stops are important for uh, complete and accurate editing the code or address the rendering speed and the sc uh, scrolling issue. I think the way around this is just to export the org document to a PDF file and uh, do your evaluation of different uh, images by examining them in the PDF rather than the org file. The path to a PDF is lightning fast in Emacs compared to uh, Jupyter, where it's uh, cumbersome in, in comparison. This is a snapshot of my initialization file. So these parts are relevant to uh, doing this work. A uh, full description of them can be found in the readme file of this uh, repository on GitHub. I'd like to thank the Nathan Schock Data Science Workshop for feedback during presentations I've made about this work. And I would also like to thank the following funding sources for support. I will now take questions. Thank you.